Welcome everyone to 2023 season episode 6 of the Team Blaney podcast. My name is Adam Rogers and alongside me is co-host Steve Mez. As always, this podcast is brought to you by fans for fans. Steve and I have been following the drivers of the Blaney racing family for two decades and Team Blaney itself launched on social media in 2014. Each weekly episode of the podcast offers an in-depth analysis of Ryan Blaney's latest NASCAR Cup Series race, plus news, notes, and a lineup of special guests all throughout the year. This week, we break down the number 12 team's run in the Pennzoil 400 this past Sunday at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Steve, welcome back to episode six of the podcast for 2023. Viva Las Vegas, I guess. It was a, it looked like a chilly weekend there, a windy weekend there. Saw a pretty decent truck race. You saw an Xfinity Series race that went down to the white flag. And then you saw a Cup Series race that... For parts of it, maybe you took a nap, maybe not. I know you're taking notes, though, so there's probably no naps. Um, but ended up with kind of an exciting-ish finish and an overtime result. Um, not always the best of days or best races for us to to watch as far as it goes to the 12 team. But um, it's always nice to see the Cup Series head out there uh, to the desert. Well, you know, it's not going to be 36 uh straight weeks of happiness and joy, you know, never is. Um, but one thing about it is we may have discovered something about the new nose. Um, and, uh, and actually a lot of cars had some of the same issues as the race went on. So as we get into it and we talk about during the report here, you'll see that, uh, it, although there were problems, it wasn't like there was one team or one individual having that problem. Um, there were multiple cars having the same exact thing going on, the same exact d- description I heard in some post-race interviews already, uh, some of the other cars. So um, overcoming it and the adjustments and so forth uh, were pretty important. And actually, the they gained as the day went on and figured out some things. So the, the note going forward should be better, you know. Yeah, one of those situations where, unfortunately, like, misery loves company, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was good that it wasn't just uh, the issues that, that the 12 team uh, ran into at, at Las Vegas weren't just on themselves. But it definitely doesn't lower the frustration level, the fact that that across the board there, there, there seemed to be some performance struggles. But as always, as you said, they, they worked on it all day long and got the car better and um, at least put them in position to try to get a good finish. So, um I don't, other than that, like I said, I already mentioned the truck race. That, that was Kyle Busch, you know, runs away with that one. Um, Xfinity race, Austin Hill gets the victory at the last second over Chandler Smith and Justin Allgaier. And uh, let's just jump into it and talk about the the weekend for the Cup Series. Yeah, you know, I just picked up my notes a second ago just to start reading um, about practice. And it's very interesting, you know, because Ryan, there was Group A, Group B. Yep. Ryan's in Group A. Seven laps into to practice, he stated that he started going tight. Ooh, so that, that might have been I, a <laughs> this is a correlating <laughs> yeah. to something that happens a whole next day for everybody you know um he ran 15 laps and uh, as it turns out like at the end of the day he actually had the best 15 lap average too so that tells you something there um they uh they came in after 15 um they did a couple things work on it and then uh They came back out. They actually ran some pretty good laps. You know, by then everybody has their one good lap down. So it's hard to tell. Um, Just you have to do from what they what they say over the radios and so forth. Um, They uh, they ran 10 more laps when they came back out. Uh, Jonathan asked him to get some temp out of it, I think, because they were coming into qualifying after that. Um, And it's much, you know, interesting because Group B comes out and the 23 was the fastest car. And that only placed him P6 compared to the first group of guys. So and these things are all within a tenth or two tenths, you know. And I always look at the lap averages, you know, or the 15, best 15 lap average, thinking, well, okay, he's going to be pretty good come race day because they're going to run a bunch of, um, you know, a bunch of laps are going to be longer than that. And a bunch of uh, sequences will be longer than that. Uh, they go out to qualify. He goes out 11th in group A out of the 18 total. He hangs on to being fifth. Um, the 22, 24, the eight, the five and the 12, uh, group B ends up being the 20, the two, the six, the 54 and the one. Um, 
and uh, actually of note during the practice, the 21 crashed uh, and they found out that a lug nut had come up off the track and, and hit the radiator, knocked the radiator out, knocked the fluid out of it. And he ran right through the fluid and hit the wall. Um, yeah, that was, that was interesting. And I know you're, you kind of immediately were like, man, I hope this isn't because we didn't know when it happened. We didn't know Harrison didn't know in the interview right after that. And you're like, hopefully mm-hmm. this isn't just, this isn't some sort of build problem or mechanical problem that again, you'll see with multi-car teams here that it could maybe affect the 12. It could affect the 22. It could affect the two. Right. Luckily, I don't want to say it's luckily, but man, just a freak accident. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, like I said, with the group A group B qualifying, being fifth in group A means when you come out to qualify, uh, you're going to be the first guy out in the, in, for that poll poll qualifying and usually it goes in order like that in other words the you know unless you're really really significantly better than everybody else you kind of you know but he gets done with his lap for there and they told him uh you know he ryan says that was pretty good good pickup so they did something between the first qualifying lap and the second qualifying lap and you know jonathan says it should be pretty respectable and sure enough he hangs on to third you know the next nine guys go and he hangs on to third joey gets the pole um, and we, uh, we know the two cars starting in the top 10. So we're thinking all the Penske's are up there where they belong. They all did a great job over the practice. They did a great job for the qualifying. So I'm looking really forward to Sunday. Like I said, I pull up this 15 lap average. Ryan's the fastest 15 lap average, you know, so we get to race day stages of 80, 165, 267, a fuel run of 60 to 65 laps, nine sets of tires. He's in pit stall 37 which is open in front of him and then 16 behind him, which you wouldn't think would normally affect your day, but it does a little later on. Um, <laughs> the flyover. Uh, did you catch, you catch the, the flyover again? Uh, they had the, the, oh, the, <laughs> the, the Thunderbirds. I did actually on the yeah. team Blaney account made a little tweet there about them buzzing the spotter stand again. Yeah, because one of the first things that Ryan's on the track right after it happens, he's, He's on the radio. He says something to Josh about getting a haircut again. <laughs> and he says, yeah, it just grew in from two weeks ago. And they, they were pretty low to the low to the tower again. Um, so I guess the low lane was the lane to start with um, on these restarts because the 22 took the low lane and had Ryan behind him. I thought this was going to be fabulous that they would push right ahead and leave the high lane behind and, and just race for the lead, you know, but uh, not really. Um by lap three, the 24 actually does pass Ryan and Ryan at lap four is talking about chattering in the front and he's tight already. Uh, he's racing with the five and the five pass him. He goes to fourth plowing tight, um, tight exit. Um, the one passes he's in the fifth at lap 10, the 24 is taking the lead. Now Ryan's in fifth there at, uh, lap 15. Uh, Jonathan tells him everybody's complaining about tight. Um, you know, they do go kind of up and down pit road, at least with some of the guys that they, they will talk to them and they all find out the same thing, you know, at lap 18, the 20 passes in the sixth. And at this point, the 22 was kind of blocking things too. And, and he was having the same issue and he's just trying to hold on to positions and, uh, lap 19, the 11 passes, he's in the seventh lap 23 talks about being loose going into both corners. So lap, uh, lap 27, uh, the six passes in eighth, just kind of slowly falling backward. You know, it's only a 10th or two off, but it's, you know, it's enough. Um, at lap 30, he loses two spots. He's back to 10th. And then at lap 33, he decides to pit. Um, they try to go in a little early here to see if they can hurry up and fix what it is. And maybe that's, it's a second to a second half faster lap on the fresh tires. So they're thinking maybe they'll gain a little bit of advantage here. Um, <clears throat> At lap 41, um, he ends up 11th after that cycle. So he is about a 10th faster at that point. Now, once again, every time they go get four tires, of course, he's actually faster than the other guys who got the four tires. So their faster car in the long run, uh, it doesn't work out because the, in the long run, the car gets tight quickly. Um, lap 54, uh, two more cars pass him. He's in the 13th and, uh, Ryan says he's all over the place here, you know, so he's trying to figure out what to tell them, uh, for their next adjustment. Um, about 59, a couple more cars. we got the four and the 43 pass. He's in the 15th. Uh, he's telling the best thing I can do is not wreck here. And there are moments, um, through the in-car camera where it's very squirrely, especially coming out of three and four. Um, at lap seven, four talks about, he's getting a vibration. Uh, 
and it's getting worse. Um, lap 75, he wiggles really, really badly, as a matter of fact, and then the 17 and 99 pass him, and and within a lap or two, uh, the 2 and the 31 pass, he's back to like 19th at this point. At lap 79, the 10 passes him, he's back to 20th. And um, the the 16 actually ends up hitting hitting bad too. He's just, he's shaking the wheel, shaking so bad, it's loose going into the corners, and um, he's wondering if he has a loose wheel, you know, on the right front. So, and as you said, um, he's not the only one making these complaints. They talked yeah. about Kevin Harvick a couple of times throughout the race, basically describing almost the same thing: the chattering, the being mm-hmm. incredibly tight, the vibrations. You're seeing that mm-hmm. from the four car, a few other Fords, and I think you even saw it from, uh, I think Christopher Bell even at one point. So that's a Toyota. I think you, uh, Bubba Wallace, you mentioned too. Um, yeah. So it wasn't just strictly Fords, but it was mostly Fords that were all on the radios, letting their crew chiefs know that they just feel like something's off. Now the uh, the twenty four wins the stage, and one of the things early on in the race that Ryan talks about is the back end of the car is not into the track at all. So the first thing they're working on is getting the back end of the track, and then and then they'll work on the front end, getting control of the front end. So um, this is something Jonathan says to him. He says, "Well, um, but he says here we're going to be pitting, and the sixteen will be pitting right in front of us, or we'll be pitting right in front of the sixteen. I'm sorry, but the sixteen comes on pit road right in front of them, so they got to go around them to get to their stall." Um, they pit in 21st, come out 19th. So they actually going to do pretty good on that. Um, the two scone comes up. The 24 takes the bottom. Ryan takes the top, the restart lap 90, um, after the restart, cause the restarts are wild for three or four laps till they sort out. And he sorts out to about 18th by lap 94. He's in 16th, um, but 95, the 17 passes him. He's in 17th. Um, then at lap 102, the 19 and the 17 bump into each other right in front of him. And it was kind of interesting because I see it on the in-car. I hear it on the radio. And those two things on my in my end of things, the way the satellite is for my computer for, for my TV, um, happens before the TV shows it. So I knew way ahead of time something was happening. And uh he does a good job, gets to actually past both of them for a minute, gets up to uh, to 15th, um, talks about at 105, talks about still vibrating. Um I think somewhere in here they tell him that the cord, uh, that the freight front was corded um, after the pit stop and checking the tires. So, um, of course, he ran a long segment in that first uh, <clears throat> in the first stage. So, uh, lap 118 tells him no front turn, it's sideways. Uh, the 99 does pass him here. He gets to 16th, and then at lap 120 we start a green flag cycle. Um, I think he's about 17th when this cycle starts. Or I'm sorry, to start, 17 is the first one to start the cycle. I'm sorry, he's 16th at the start of the cycle. He ends up about 18th after they all cycle through. Um, at lap 135, uh, he's two tenths faster than the next five cars ahead of him. Once again, four tires and the adjustment early on in, in any of these runs, he is the fastest car, one of the fastest cars. But as the, <clears throat> as the handling goes away, and it goes away quickly within 10 laps, usually he's you know relegated to where he's at. Um, he does pass the 17, gets to 17th. Um, there's 23 cars on the lead lap at this part point because they had a couple green flag pit cycles. At lap 152, he passes the 10, gets to 16th. At lap 164, passes the 43, gets to 15th. Um, so we get to the end of the stage. At next next lap here, the 24 wins, and Ryan's up to 15th at this point. So they've made some improvement. Um, like I said, the back end, he, they had worked on getting the back end into the, into the track more. Um Ryan does tell him the rear is a little better. He says the right, the, the front loses all sense of feel um, after about 12 laps. So and Jonathan says to keep fighting a lot has changed over the winter. Uh, the top forward is ninth right at that point, <laughs> you know, so he's telling him, you know, you are not the only one, especially the forwards that are having these issues. Uh, they're pitting in 14th they, or in 15th. They come out 14th. So once again, pretty good stop. <laughs> Uh, they're 14th for the choose. Uh, the leader of the 24 takes the bottom. Ryan takes the top. Uh, restarts at lap 174. And he actually sorts out to about 11th here. Uh, does a great job on that restart, getting around a couple of people. And um, then at lap 183, we had a caution for the 22. 
So that was only a couple laps later. Ryan tells them it, it, it fired off better. They're all figuring on pitting and taking four tires at this point. They had nine sets of tires to start the race. And uh, he tells them that everybody should pretty much come in and take tires. And they do pretty much. Uh, they come out, uh, the pitting in 11th. Uh, I think they come out here 10th, actually, or 11th. Yeah, so he, you know, so yeah, he comes in 11th, goes out 11th. The leader is the 11. <laughs> There's a lot of 11s there. Sorry. Um, the 11 takes the bottom. Ryan takes the, uh, takes the bottom also. The restart at lap 190 and it sorts out to 10th place at this point. Um, at lap 195, the 11 and the five are battling for the lead now and five takes that lead. And at lap 197, the 45 hits the wall. Um, and, um, the 99 passes Ryan because Ryan's trying to avoid some of this <laughs> and he ends up at 11th, but, uh, lap 201, he passes 99 to get to 10th at lap 208 passes the 45 to get to ninth at lap 210. He tells him he's better front turn now, still losing loose center exit. Um, the right front is still chattering, uh, lap 213, uh, he passed the 23, he gets to eighth. So, you know, it's looking pretty solid now. Um, Lap 219, he says, uh, how many more till we pit? Because it's getting tighter and tighter each each lap on center exit. And they figure about 10 laps to pit at this point, but I think the cycle starts early here. Lap 221, the 11 comes in, the 4, the 19, the 5, all come in in those next couple laps. So they pit at lap 224. Um, the 6 stayed out. Uh, after the cycle, he pretty much ends up, 10th after the cycle. So I think maybe one car may have pitted, done a better job pitting there. Um, at lap 235, he's catching the eight car. At lap 236, he passes the eight car, gets to ninth. At lap 244, um, Josh kind of tells him where the 19 is in fifth place because he can see him. He's only less than a straightaway away, you know, so he's trying to give him something to, to try for here by the end of the race. Lap 252, he passes the four car, gets to eighth. Now at this point, he's the top board. <laughs> in eighth you know which which is kind of a big deal as we said the ford struggled all day long and he he's kind of just running best in class if there's anything to shoot for i mean they didn't necessarily have the car to win the race but maybe at least this was something to be be a little bit proud of uh, for the moment okay lap 263 we did caution for the 10 uh whatever happens to the 10 oh, and i'm gonna say something here and i just popular unpopular but hindsight is 2020 okay everybody y'all out there who can say oh they should have done this and oh they should have done that and what happens if they do what they did and it worked then you're all yeah. going oh that was a, that was great but it's always easy to afterward to say oh that was stupid but the reality is is you got to try something and be off sequence and do something different than everybody else yeah, so this okay. is a situation where I know leading into this, technically they do something different than everybody else. They do else. something different than everybody else. That's the thing. They do. But it's also, um, um, I like to equate it to like, you know, being mad at your head football coach, like the decision to go for two to win the game. And then, you know, if, if they get it, you know, they're a genius. They're the best coach of all time. Yeah. This is amazing. You know, they fall an inch short of the goal line and you lose and it's like, oh, they need to be fired. They need all this stuff. So it's, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it just, you can't, you know, uh, that's the thing. I, my wife yelled at me, stay off social media. Just don't even look. Don't even look. And she's right because everybody has an opinion and you know what they say about that. <clears throat> yeah. I'm and some like, people, I know we haven't even got to what happened here, but some people yeah. I've realized just want to vent too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so. you know, well, here's the thing. Okay. So now they're, they're, they're coming into pit. Um, and, you know, Jonathan equates it to something that happened last year. Okay. And, uh, you know, a couple of guys who took two last year, um, and Jonathan says, I'm leaning toward a number one. Okay. Whatever that is on their chart. Right. And Ryan says 10, four. And then he says, I think I'm with you guys on that one. He says, my tires are used up. Okay. So everybody wants to blame one guy. Okay. But the reality is, is he left it up to the driver. Okay. If the driver wants to take a risk, uh, if he would have said to Jonathan, you know what, I'm going to stay out. Jonathan is like, okay, let's get ready for that. Or if he tells Jonathan, Hey, let's try two. Jonathan will say, okay, let's put this kind of pressure in, in the tires. Cause Jonathan asked him those kind of questions. That's why I've written down here, but he asked him those kind of questions about what the car is doing so that if he did a two tire stop, he'd know how much air pressure to put in each of those tires. You know, if he, 
does does the four, then we're going to do a certain amount of air pressure, this one, that one, the other one, you know, accordingly. So all these questions were asked and they are pitting all the way back on pit road too. So you can't necessarily hurry up and make a call based on something you see somewhere else because it's happening and you're already in the middle of your pit stop yeah. and it's happening in front of you. So, you know, the 19 stays out here. So that's one strategy. <laughs> That's one strategy. Now, once again, we discussed this already before we got on here. Uh, if if you stayed out with them, then there'd be two of you with no tires sitting at the front, but you'd both be sitting ducks, you know. It's not going to win, yeah. You no, know, who roots you out of the way and where you end up and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, they, they go ahead and take four. A bunch of cars took two. Uh, we know this. And we restart um, with 13 p13 for the restart the 19 takes the bottom and ryan takes the bottom now um on these restarts and we saw it during one of the other races over the weekend you cannot go below the uh below the line before you get to the start finish line either so you know he's reminded of that but um in car camera was really 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 where you should to I watched these two laps. I didn't watch these two laps on the TV up above. I watched them on the in camera I have set up on the other TV. And, you know, where, depending on, you know, maybe you have a position or two more, maybe you would have gained a position or two more. Uh, if he took two with everybody else, he would have been about three or more, four more spots up, you know, which would have been maybe two rows up from where he was. But the reality is, is he was racing with those people. So, you would hope that the four tires would, would do you justice in those two laps and get around a couple of those people. It just didn't work that way. Things got stacked up. Everybody on the low line coming out of one and two were trying to get lower than everybody else to get the three or four, and you couldn't do it without crashing everybody. And I would say this much for everybody, except for the crash that happened on the backstretch at the end. Everybody pretty much raced pretty respectable. Nobody really did. You know, they could have, there could have been five green, white checkered finishes, you know, with all the crashes that could have happened in terms one and two on the restarts. But, uh, so yeah, the 24 ends up, the 24 ends up taking, taking the lead and, and, and taking the win. Um, the tricks held off for about a lap. Basically he was second when they came to the white flag. Um, Ryan got bottled up in the middle of all that mess. And like I said, without wrecking anybody, um, you know, he got 13th finish out of it. So, um, could it have been three or four more spots? Yeah. Well, hindsight's 2020. 20, once again, don't be given like, Oh, blame this. And that guy did that. You know, but he was given an opportunity, you know, to give his opinion. Uh, they trust the guy enough to ask him what he thinks, he, you know, he wants to do. And he, at the time thought, yeah, let's take four tires. Cause you know what? My tires are crap right now. And every run, his tires were only good for about seven to 10 laps in the run. And then that was it. They were done. So if you put two on at that point, the left side of tires were going to fail him anyway, e either. So even if he was up in front of a couple other cars, he might've fell back there anyway. So yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, it's one of those situations you can't, you can't win. You have to try and do something different. And they did. They were the ones that took four. And like I said, if it worked out and they moved up a bunch of spots, then everybody would be here right now. Everybody would be online going, Oh, that was so great. It didn't work that way this time. Maybe it works better the next time. It's kind of funny. Like you, I think a lot of people looked at this decision as them not gambling, but when they actually were the ones that took four and everybody else went nope. with two, I kind of feel like they were the ones that gambled here and it, it just the, didn't the, work out. The, um, the other one that took four tires was Harvick and Harvick only finished, uh, he finished ninth. Yeah. You know, and actually Harvick, want to say started a spot or two in front of him so he didn't really gain that much ground either but he tried he tried something different too you know justin haley it worked out for a guy like justin he finished eighth you know for him that's best finish he'll probably have all year except for super speedway you know so and as you were kind of uh, alluding to with the the way his tires were all race long you know even though they made gains on the car to get up into the top 10 he still wasn't happy with how the handling was so if you mm -hmm put them on, you know, off balance tires with new on one side, old on the other. I can't even imagine what kind of a handful that car was going to be in. Um, now I can't say that Jonathan Hassler, you know, in his year and a few races here as a, as a crew chief has, um, he's not always like on the, 
like he's made some bold decisions before we talked we talked multiple yeah. times about the indy road course and that decision they made to stay out on old tires before so he's gambled before the 12 team historically uh, especially under like the previous crew chief has been pretty conservative with calls in the past so it's not really anything new that i've seen where people kind of get upset where they don't gamble but i think they also are trying to play a points game they're trying to be consistent they knew they didn't have a car to win they knew that their gamble wasn't going to put them on the front row unless they mm. pulled a true x type gamble which i think that was about as crazy as you could get but even him he didn't end up really advancing his position he kind of just held around where he was running so yeah. um yeah. it is what it is it's it's easy to be a monday morning quarterback or monday morning crew chief or or whatever you want mm-hmm. but i just don't know i all i know is i don't want to be the one that's making those calls i just want to be the one that's talking about it and people know i mean they probably say i'm too soft on on the team anyway but i just don't I don't, I don't want to be the one making the call. I don't get paid to make the call and I can't necessarily criticize them too much. Cause with this, it's not like a guaranteed, you know, I don't see it as a mistake because there's no guarantee as to what the results are going to be. And yeah, I just don't know. Well, that's like I said, that's the thing about pointing it out here once and I'll point it out again. He didn't, he wasn't the only one that made the call. He gave his opinion and then he asked Ryan what he thought. Okay, if Ryan says, hey, let's I want to take two. I want to see if I can get there a little further. Or if Ryan says, I'm just staying out, you know. Um, and he says it code in a code language or something, or you know, whatever. Then, you know, they do that. They would they did whatever it really came down to whatever the driver felt he could do and what he wanted to try. And that's the other thing is like Ryan gets four tires and he feels like he could try something with those four tires. So he did try something. <laughs> That's the thing. You watch the in-car camera. He tried to do things. It's not like he was just sitting there like, Oh boy, I'm getting run over back here. No, he tried to get his nose up in there. He was at the middle of four at one point and you know what? It didn't work out this time, you know, but like you said, it's only a couple positions either way. Um, do you want those couple positions? I mean, if, if he takes no tires, he would have started about two rows up further. Or if he took two tires, I'm sorry. He would have started up like maybe a yeah. row or two up further. And he could have fell back to 13th there anyway doing that. So four tires was the gamble. And, it, you know, it was different than everybody else. And, you know, you got to see what you can do with it. Yeah. Like I said, just one of those things where I didn't even not until we just started discussing this and I was thinking about like everyone saying they should have gambled. The truth is they actually, they actually did gamble. They, did they gamble. gambled with the, with the four tire call. So at mm-hmm. this point, you know, Ryan finishes the Daytona 500 and eighth. He came home 26 after that crash last week, in California uh, finishes 13th at Las Vegas. So you can imagine when it comes to the point standings after the Pennzoil 400, Ryan has slipped a couple more positions. He slipped three positions from last week. He's down to the 50, 15th position in points, which makes sense. Um, we talked uh, amongst ourselves to the fact, you know, they haven't really scored a lot of stage points yet this year, which was kind of their MO last year was getting tons and tons of stage points. So I'm hoping that they can kind of turn the corner on that uh, when we head to Phoenix. So 15th position, he is 48 points back of the leader who's Ross Chastain. Uh, the top five in points are Chastain, Bowman, Harvick, Daniel Suarez, and Martin Truex Jr. I'm I'm a little worried about the mile and a half now. Yeah. Okay. Because this thing with the nose, the the new nose, this was the first real track we were going to see something about it. And the reality is, is the whole thing with the the back end of the car wasn't in the track. So I'm sure they'll have an adjustment for that. But the front end after 10 laps was tight, 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 tight. So um, hopefully they can figure out some things before they race another mile and a half, you know, and then, uh, you know, that's next week uh, is a little bit different because it's a mile, but, you know, what was it? every week is different, you know, so who knows what, what, what they discover. But that's the thing is everybody had the same problem. Everybody had the same issue with the Fords, you know, one by the end of the race, if they don't get the caution, he finishes eighth and he's the top Ford and he adjusted, adjusted, adjusted all day long just to get to that point. So. Yeah. So as I said, uh, the cup series heads to Phoenix, 
this weekend. If you like to catch the the weekend's action, it starts on Friday, actually, with the Arkham Arkham Menard series at 8 p.m. Eastern time on FS2. Uh, Just mentioning that for anybody that just wants to watch anything on track racing wise on Mm -hmm. Saturday. uh, We have practice and qualifying for the NASCAR Cup Series at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. The Xfinity Series race follows at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time for the United Rentals 200 on FS1 as well. Uh, And then if you want to watch the big race, 3 p.m. Eastern times when you can catch the NASCAR race day pre-race show, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, the United Reynolds work United 500 at Phoenix Raceway on Fox. Now, Ryan's statistics at Phoenix are, again, one of his best tracks, an average finish of 12.6. Get this, an average start of 5.4, five top fives. 10 top 10s. He had that runner-up finish in the uh, season finale last year that we many of us think he probably easily could have won the race if maybe he pushed it a little bit harder on his teammate that was running for a championship. Prior to that, he had two back-to-back fourth-place finishes, a 10th, a 6th, a 3rd, a 3rd. He did have a 37th in there uh, when he was involved in a crash. But, um, you know, dating back to 2019, uh, he has a top 10 finish all the way from 2019 to 2022 with just one lone 37th place finish stuck in there in the spring race of 2020. Incredibly good at this track. But Steve, hold on. NASCAR is throwing a wrench into our plans here when it comes to Phoenix and the fact that they have changed the arrow package. Uh for tracks one mile and under going into this race. So they're going from a four inch spoiler to a two inch spoiler. Uh, They're removing some of the, the blades, I guess that's in the diffuser um, and some other aerodynamic changes. Um, I don't know if you've read up on any of this prior to this, but Henske has been incredibly good. Again, one, two finish in the finale at Homestead last year with Logano and uh, Ryan, does any of this concern you that their their speed might be a little bit different at this track? Or do you think that these changes are so minimal that maybe it's not going to make that much of a difference? And who knows? Maybe it's just the way Ryan approaches the track, the way he, the speed he enters the corner, the line he runs, you know, where he lifts, where he breaks, you know. I'm hoping it's that. What do you think? Loose is fast, right? And this yeah. is designed to kind of, this is designed to kind of make the cars looser. Um, it's, you know, that's the other thing is as long as they're not shifting, <laughs> I think this yeah. is what they're trying to get away from oh, is the, goodness, short, yeah. the short, the short track shifting, you know, because guys would tell you that they'd shift and it would uh, cover up any mistakes that they made going into a corner. So if this makes it so that you have to drive better going into the corner, coming out of the corner, you don't have to worry about downshift, upshift, downshift, upshift at each end. Um, I think it's great. I think that's where, where the talent shows up. That's, that's, that was the big thing about, um, one of the first short track races last year, Martinsville that uh, they told you about them were shifting. And, you know, we watched a whole race there. We were at that one and, you know, everybody got in a single file line and they couldn't get around anybody because nobody was wiggling, you know, nobody, you couldn't bump anybody, make them wiggle because they were downshift, upshift, downshift, upshift. Well, if we can eliminate some of that going into the turns and now a guy has to float it in there and come off the throttle and maybe to get any air rear end gets a little loose or take a little air off of him and, yeah, that's that's where guys like Ryan will show off their talent, you know. So I'm for it. Yeah, let's see what yeah. happens. Yeah, I definitely wish that this was something we would have known about when we had crew chief Jonathan Hassler on because, man, that was my biggest complaint last year at every short track, you know, regardless of what the reason why or if some of the drivers like it, some of them don't. It just kills me to see them focus on shifting, having to shift at a place like Martinsville. Um Oh man, it just it drives me nuts. And when they announced this pack, new package, I was like, oh great, maybe they changed the gearing. Now, I do think the, the gear ratios and that kind of stuff are also tied all the way into the way the engine packages are. And I think they don't want to, I think they just kind of have two types of engine packages between the super speedways and the short tracks. And they don't want to mess with, or not just the short tracks, but the super speedways and basically everywhere else. So I think they, they're trying to keep costs down and that's why they're not messing with the gearing here. But I would like to get an expert or somebody on to to, to kind of explain that because I was hoping that the gearing would change along with the aerodynamic changes to, just to get them stop shifting. But I have seen some drivers say it's not that big of a deal. To me, I still feel like that's taken a lot of your focus. Um, maybe not necessarily at Phoenix because it's a mile, but anything smaller than that. So um, one other thing I didn't mention about Ryan's stats there, he's three pole positions uh, in 2017, 2019, also the spring race of 2022. So he's technically 
technically the defending pole winner uh, last year. Now we haven't mm-hmm. necessarily seen, I mean, I know we're only a couple of races in here and uh, maybe California and Las Vegas were the two best tests. We haven't really seen that super raw speed that we saw from the 12 team in qualifying last year. Um, I'd like to think that's because they're focusing a little bit more on, on overall setup and, or maybe it was just because they were they were trimmed out the most last year because they went on a string of multiple poles to start the season. So, well, maybe I, don't, he, I don't know about that. Well, first off, California's got rained out. That's true. So who and, knows? Yeah, exactly. And this past weekend, he was third. Uh, you know, so yeah, who knows? Who knows? So he could. Uh, it'd be great if he picked up a fourth career pole at Phoenix. Um, but again, if you want to catch this race. Uh, watch practice and qualifying at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. Catch the race 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. The United Reynolds work United 500 at Phoenix Raceway. So, Steve, I want to take a second to jump back here and give a recap of uh, points earned, the top 10 in points earned in the NASCAR Fantasy Live League uh, this past week uh, for the race at Las Vegas. Um, I kind of want to go through what our – uh, rosters were uh, for this race. And I don't know. I really wasn't sure what to do. I'm kind of wary of using like all the big time people right away. So I just kind of switched my lineup this week. And I don't know that it was necessarily uh, the best decisions here, but I'll go through my starters here. I had William Byron. Uh, that worked out. Uh, <laughs> and Ross Chastain. <laughs> Uh, that was kind of okay. I had Joey Logano. That was unfortunate. Uh, Denny Hamlin, he kind of had an up and down day, but that ended up okay. And then I also had Eric Jones, who at points looked like he maybe was going to to end up with a really good run, but he did fade toward the end there. And then I had Ryan in the garage. There was a, a period of time there where I kept bouncing back and forth on whether I should put Ryan in instead of Joey. Even after Joey crashed, I still I still left Ryan where he was. Um, when it came to featured ma- matchups, I picked Logano over Kyle Busch. That was wrong. I picked Bell over Truex. That was right. I picked Blaney over Hamlin. That was wrong. I, pl- I picked uh, Larson over Chastain. So that was right. So I split the difference on the featured matchups and uh, at least p- picked the race winner in my lineup. But overall, I did not perform well as I did last week. I um, I did something interesting here. I I. I did. I got to the end of stage two, realized Ryan didn't have any stage points and I, I swapped him out and uh, I had Bubba Wallace in the garage. So that actually was about a 17 point difference. <laughs> you don't usually get, you think you don't usually mess with your garage person. I usually don't. That's good. And I, I, I was like smart enough to do it at that point. And <laughs> yeah, but, I, I swapped that out, but uh, I had Logano too. And that did not work out because he ended up leaving the race after that. So but that was too late at that point. So um, that's where I got hurt on points because I had Larson, I had Kyle Busch, and I had Hamlin. So I had some guys that were you know pretty good for a number of points. Uh, Larson was 53 points. Um, let's see here, Logano. I had Logano over Kyle. That didn't work. I did have Christopher Bell, and I um, had Ryan over Denny. That was only two spots, too. You know, it wasn't – it was pretty close. And I did have Larson. So I, I split those picks also. So – you know, it uh, it could have been a little better. I, you know, Joey Joey going out yeah. the really was what killed me. You know, because that's you know at the you know he only gets me a point, and and he normally would have been at least another you know another twenty points or so if he's still in the race. Um, yeah. So the, and it looks like the overall standings looks like they uh, updated the overall standings yeah. too. Okay. So, so let's let's take a look at um the results from Las Vegas and let's take a look at where we finished. So I ended up in the 51st position tied a four way tie for 51st. So that's great. Um, with 171 points earned and you only scored four more points than me. So I'm glad that we are at least in the vicinity of each other. Mez 12, 49th position tied for 49th with one other person, 175 points. Let's take a look at the top 10. In 10th, we have Skeet 22, 227 points. In 9th, we have the Prime Minister 3 with 229. In 8th, we have Glitterbugs with 232. In 7th, we have Go 12 Go, just one point more, 233. Six, we have Blaney's Net, 236. In 4th, we have a tie with Alyssa C in all four, two, four with 241 points. In third, we have a familiar name from last year here, Frygal 12 with 249 points. In second, now I bring up the fact that uh, last week we cleared out some folks that hadn't set up lineups this year. And um, 
So it was about 24 spots that opened up. One of those people that got in here was Epic Chicken 19 Epic Epic, uh, sorry, Epic Chickens 1916 jumped in. I know we're two couple of races in, but this is what I'm talking about when I say there's still plenty of time to catch up because in the second position we have Epic Chickens 1916 with 256 points and then in first Christian Dana, 267. Uh, so they are the ones that came out on top in points earned. i um, happy to say that after we opened up those 24 spots, now we have 96 of 100 uh, spots filled in the Fantasy League with everybody setting lineups for this week at Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I, and like I said, I think they've updated the overall standings too. We have the cool. overall standings, so let's take a look yeah. at that. In the 10th position, Skeet 22, 543. In ninth, the Prime Minister 3, 549. Eighth, Glitterbugs, 556. Seventh, Joe Lopez 1, 557. Six, Blaring Idiots, 565. Fifth, Bulldog 0277, 576. In third, Christian Dana, 593. Third, also tied for that hilton's heroes also with 593 in second the nutty gamer 594 and i believe for the third straight week in the first position leading the way in the team blading nascar fantasy live league is steel lion with 609 points my team team blaney host adam 518 points and 22nd and Mez 12 is in the 28th position, 504. So just 14 points behind here. Um, I also like to give a shout out to uh, one of the people that was really ran really, really well last year, all year with us was Rogue Tough. Um, because of how high they finished in the points last year, I gave them a pass. They actually had it set up lineups for the first two weeks. And then they jump in here, uh, third race and, uh, get it get a get a lineup in with uh earning 196 points at las vegas so welcome back rogue tough to the team blaney nascar fantasy live league i'm sure that they will get their way up into the top 20 top 25 pretty soon along the way so we're heading to phoenix raceway as we just discussed a little bit um this might be one of those weeks you definitely want to at least have ryan in your garage if not start him Probably the Joey Logano. If you haven't used Joey that much yet this year, it's another one you're going to want to get in there. I'm not sure about, you know, so I'm just bringing up the Penske cars that have been really good there the last couple of years. I don't know what to think about Austin Sindrick or Harrison Burton, who's kind of had a little uh, rough pass, patch uh, last couple of races here. Um, but I think Ryan and Joey might be locks for my lineup. And, um, you know, Ross Chastain, and it, you know, that's how he finished second in the points last year. I ended up third in that race in the finale at home or at Phoenix. So, um, what are you thinking when it comes to your lineup for this week? Or are you going to wait? Like, oh, I usually wait, but I, 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 there's one I want to keep an eye on during practice and everything. And that's Kevin Harvick. Um, now we're going to a different package with this car, um, package that he, he's probably going to be better with also. And the fact that, uh, this is his track. You know what I mean? He's won so many times here and, uh, this is the finale basically until, until the last one at the end of the year. So, um, yeah, I want to keep an eye on, on him. Um, I did a TikTok early, early today and I'll try and do one every Sunday morning, uh, with a little bit of a fantasy update and so forth. One of the things I, I think I mentioned today, but if, if I, if you haven't done so yet and you're checking your lineup and you, you just put your lineup in and you leave it that way for a couple of weeks or whatever, uh, hurry up and go change the number nine car out because, uh, you're not going to have Chase Elliott in your lineup, uh, for a couple of weeks here. So that's one thing just to kind of look at, look at and make sure of before, uh, next week's lineup. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. We didn't even really discuss that yet. I thought maybe maybe the now's the time to do it. You have the nine car. Uh, Josh Berry was in it for the race at Las Vegas. Uh, they, the team president, I think, said they were going to uh, announce it in a couple of days as who would be in it when it comes to the race at Phoenix. I'm going to guess it's still going to be Josh Berry just for consistency purposes. Chase mm-hmm. Elliott. Uh, I think everybody already knows, broke his tibia and his left leg, a snowboarding accident. Um, they called it a freak accident. Now, this isn't just, you know, Chase on a one-off going out to snowboard. He's been doing this for several, several years. He's very skilled mm-hmm. at it. Um, this isn't a new thing. And these guys are going to live their lives after, you know, I think Ryan, they interviewed Ryan because Ryan's one of Chase's friends. And Ryan said, you know, you could trip down the stairs and break your leg mm-hmm. on the way to the track in the morning. So, mm-hmm. um 
and these guys, I mean, they're, I don't want to call them adrenaline junkies, but they, you know, they like kind of living that kind of lifestyle. And, you know, I don't blame them. It's unfortunate that it happened. Um, most likely we'll get that waiver from NASCAR. There's already a precedent set with Tony Stewart injured in a, like a ATV accident 2016. I believe it was, they gave him a waiver, um, had to look that one up because I thought the same thing. All the other waivers I was thinking about were from concussions, from, uh, crashes and Kyle Busch breaks his leg in an Xfinity series race, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then someone pointed out in our discord, about the Tony Stewart thing. So Chase is probably going to get that. I don't know if it's going to be a carousel of drivers that come through there. I mentioned to you that I think it would be interesting to see what Justin Allgaier could do in the nine car. He's extremely good at Phoenix in the Xfinity series. Um, but I think for consistency purposes, you're probably going to see Josh Berry again there uh, this weekend. You know, it's interesting. Uh, somebody put this out there in the world. and I can't remember who, cause I can't, so I don't know who it was that, but uh the idea of uh, Corey LaJoy came up. He's a Chevy driver. Um, I don't know what that would do to his team and so on and so forth, but if you're going to race that car for owner's points during this time period, you probably want the best guy in there that you could put in there. And you know, you can bring guys up from the other series or so forth, but Corey might be the guy that would consistently put some finishes together. I mean, he finished... Um, I think 20th today with his car and tell you the truth is, you know, his car is not to the standard that, that the other ones are, the other Chevys are. So uh, I would, I would like to just see it for him personally to see what he would be able to do with it. Um, But judging on, on this injury, you know, he, Elliot could be out for eight weeks, Yeah, you know, and if it's something like that, you, you want somebody, if you're going to race the car for owner's points and try and keep it up there in the owner's points, what happened today is not what you want. You want somebody who can stick it in there and, and do something with it. So I would just throw that out in the wind, you know, I'm Man, sure that, that would be, that, that, I'm that sure puts that a would smile be, on my face. That would be yeah, great. <laughs> that would be great. But it, it, once again, there, I'm sure there's a lot of logistical problems that would have to be worked out in a heartbeat, you know, sponsored things and so on and so forth. Um, but I, with a, with a organization like Hendrick, they could probably buy whatever they needed to buy to, to, to get him for, for that short period of time. Um, I mean, in reality, uh, you know, Corey could, Corey could win, uh, um, in the seven car at one of the super speedways, you know, yeah. that's, that's, if he was going to make the playoffs, that was going to be his way in, but to have a chance to drive that equipment and show what he could do in that equipment for six or seven weeks would probably be a pretty good thing for him personally. Cause then at the end of this year, if there's some musical chairs going on and they're at a higher level than where he's at, all of a sudden his name becomes the name of choice. You know, so because I'm sure he would show good in it. So just throwing that out there in the world, you know, it's a thought, an idea that somebody came up with. And I, I really liked it. Um, I, I wish I could remember where, where I read it, but um, I doubt it's going to happen. But you yeah, know. like I said, that, that just kind of made me smile just thinking about it. There was a time there when uh, I think the five car was open. And there's a story about Corey LaJoy going up to uh, Rick Hendrick and handing him a note. Um, asking him just for the chance, you know, just take a chance on me to get in that equipment. Um, didn't happen. They are, they hire Kyle Larson and Kyle Larson gets in there and obviously when goes on and wins a championship. So great decision. Um, but man, that, that just makes me smile thinking about what Corey maybe could do because you're right. And I actually mentioned it to my wife during this race, you know, Corey's running good again. And again, finishing 20th for that team, that is good. Like that's kind of their, uh, kind of their threshold that now I know he has greater expectations. He'd like to get in the top 15. He did that at California. I think he finished around 13th. Um, so that was pretty impressive for this team to be running like this on tracks like this, where speed is really important is very impressive. So I'm not sure if they've stepped up their motor program. Uh, I know there's different levels that you can get, but it's, mm-hmm. it's really, really good to see Corey himself. You know, he's a big, kind of a big name, big face in the sport because of the media and the podcast and how kind of outspoken that he is fan favorite. Um, that's, that's really something interesting to think about. So, but who knows, he's, you know, he signed with Spire for the year. He has a lot of sponsors that have stuck by him for several years. So, and they're going to be on his car for the next few races. He has Atlanta coming up. He almost won Atlanta in the fall. Um, so he could still run well there in a Spire car, but um, that is an interesting thought. And I'm glad you brought that up. 
Well, Steve, I think that pretty much wraps up this episode of the Team Blaney podcast. I'd like to thank everybody once again for tuning in. If you'd like to learn more about myself or co-host Steve, just listen to our very first episode that explores our Blaney racing fandom. You can interact with us on Facebook and Twitter at Team Blaney and on Instagram at Team.Blaney and also on TikTok at Team.Blaney. And I'll, Steve, why don't you go ahead and give a, give another pitch. Yeah. Talk talk to the yeah, folks about out, what you've been doing on there. Check out the TikTok, please. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I'm trying to figure out how to get more people to see these uh, videos. Some of them are 15 seconds. Some of them are 30 seconds. I try to keep them Blaney related or at least, uh, nascar related if i can um but uh yeah check them out check us out tiktok has actually been a lot of fun um it's been a little outlet for me i try to come up with something new every day or every other day so um join tiktok and then also follow us on tiktok that way uh we you know we're gaining some followers but uh, i'd love to see a bunch more yeah, it's been growing week by week, and uh, it's been fun watching your creativity uh, on there. Uh, as it comes video by video, everyone gets better, and uh, it's been really, really cool to see. So finally, I'd like to encourage everyone to support the Ryan Blaney Family Foundation. Established in 2018, this organization supports causes like the Alzheimer's Association and UPMC Sports Medicine through fundraisers and events and membership in the Blaney Bunch Fan Club. To learn more, visit RyanBlaneyFamilyFoundation.org or follow them on Facebook. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So for my co-host, Steve Mez, I'm Adam Rogers. We'll catch you next time right here on the Team Blaney Podcast. Good night, Brussels. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming. I hope you enjoyed it.